that's a really long intro. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. It is the season premiere of Momversations, where I take three minutes out of my day to update y'all on what's going on, and I own some mom truths, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But this is a special episode, so... Today, we're going to go for about an hour, and I've got a special guest, uh, the ladies from Mother Chuckin' uh, Truth, and I thought, what a better way to kick off my conversations than on Mother's Day weekend, so walk with me through the baddest hood in the world, Mother. So, what's going on? How are you guys doing? Tell we, we were chatting a little bit offline about... You know, how moms get judged for stuff that should be 100% their decision. And, you know, I shared how I received like a death threat because I, in the last episode of It Goes Down in the PM, talked with another podcaster about how I used to spank my kids before, you know, I kind of got a little bit of perspective. Yeah, which is crazy that you can get judged for that because it's like, I mean, how do you know better until you know better? You know, like with my oldest, we used crib bumpers, which now are, I think, like, are like outlawed. Like, you're not allowed to use the crib bumpers anymore. Um, but when my oldest was a baby, like, that wasn't really widely talked about. And so we had them. And now people are like, oh my gosh, were you trying to kill your baby? I'm like, no, I just didn't know. <laughs> Yep, that's exactly what I set out to do when I woke up this morning. Yeah. Cried too much and you know, I just I was lacking in sleep and I was just getting really tired of his yeah. shit. <laughs> went, went through all that trouble decorating his crib just for that to be the the way. I mean, and with my first I bought like a three hundred dollar pottery barn set. Okay, guys? Like it was oh nice. God. Okay. It was freaking Pottery Barn Kids and it came with a bumper. I thought I was supposed to use it. My bad. And then the internet's like, take that off. And you're like, but it's so much money. <laughs> so much right? money. It's like, oh God. But no, I paid $300 for, for this. I'm going to get my money's worth. Yeah, okay. Be smarter. Infant. I mean, for- yeah, three hundred dollars. Yeah. I have three boys, and I only used it with one kid. Like, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. <laughs> Oh, God. You know, it's like, not the crib bumpers. We can't do shit. We can't. Like, dads get on get on the internet and jump rope with their kid, and it's like... <laughs> you know? Well, and let's talk about the fact that I do not post pictures of my kids in the car. Because I am terrified that somebody is going to yell at me about car seat safety. And, like, I'm all for kids being safe. But, like, you don't know what's happening the exact second that I snap the picture. What, like, whether we're stopped, whether we're going, whether we're in a fake car. Like, just don't come at me. I'm too scared to even post a picture of my kids in the car. Oh, girl, you good. Like, you cannot bully me on a on an app that has a block button, Jesse. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> I need to get a little bit of that. I, I care way too much about what people say. <laughs> Well, how long have you been podcasting for? How long has Mother Truck and Truth been a thing? Just over a year. So we started um, March of last year, and um, we are are uh, most of the way through our third season. Um, we've recorded most of the episodes through our third season, uh, but still have uh, a little over a month of it coming out. Um so yeah, and then we'll take a little break for summer and then be back for season four starting in the fall. Sorry, JC, I just totally talked for you. Would you like a turn? <laughs> You're talking for us. No, that's – I would say that's all accurate. Yeah, we're. I'm excited <laughs> about the rest of the episodes that we have coming up. We've been kind of – I feel like we've been really serious, especially the month of April, and so we have some – more like lighthearted, really fun ones coming up. And then we share a little bit more of the background. We're starting a Patreon to just share more of like the background thoughts on pop culture. Like we just um, have an episode coming up on Patreon about Kim Kardashian and the whole Marilyn Monroe dress and losing 16 pounds in three weeks. Get out of here. (laughs) (laughs) The internet had things to say. Oh, I have I have things to say. Um, there's going to be a pop up at about seven o'clock tonight where we talk about the Met Gala outfits. 
with my friend uh, Tina. So awesome. Do you do you love the Met? Like, do you pay a lot of attention to the Met Gala or is it just kind of like casual? Um, I do tune in. Be, well, it goes down in the PM has been a thing since 20 September 2020 and it's entertainment news. So I pay attention to the Oscars, the Met Gala, Fashion Week. I'll be honest, I'd like Fashion Week. We need a mom fashion week. I'm just saying, yes. you know, I I want to see models in mom buns and yoga <laughs> pants just, just to see how I look. No, no, mom and models that haven't lost baby weight. Like I need to see those models. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I love that idea. How well does food wipe off of this outfit? That's the information I need to yes. know. Yes. Yes. yes, the functionality, how easy it stains. Right. Can I get down and change a diaper in this outfit? That's that's the only information I need to know. Can you just know. imagine like I... walking the runway and like suddenly stopping to like change the <laughs> or like whipping out your boob like with a oh my gosh yes friend. can we do this can we start this let's start it now we need a mom fashion <laughs> week fashion show. yes i mean you guys it's bad enough that i'm in like a i'm in like a romper today like just like a regular i mean it's nothing crazy right um and my kids got off the bus stop today and are like why are you dressed so fancy because i'm not in leggings and a tank top um oh, but you know what though Tell the truth, drop off is a different vibe than pick up. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, and my kids ride the bus, and I mean, and just drop off at the bus stop is like, I mean, I, it is, uh, although to be fair, sometimes I'm also a mess by pickup. So it just depends on the day. <laughs> um, but I mean, it's hard enough to get my kids to the bus stop that I, I, I get a bra on and that's about the extent that I have of being able to get myself ready before the kids go to school. You you have time for a bra. God, these kids are lucky I bother with pants, okay? I was going to say, we really need to start a movement where we can just free the nipple, especially during drop-off because, what was it, two days ago, I just had the hardest time getting a bra on. I just, I have other things to worry about than whether or not, like, my boobs, you know, are flopping in the wind. I just... My my boobs have been free since my spinal injury. I don't bother with bras anymore. Yeah, I was I was hit by a drunk driver in November twenty nineteen. Holy hell! Oh gosh! And my spinal injury, like I I don't I no longer bother with bras. Bras. Yeah. I just don't understand. Like your boobs are going to sag no matter what you do. Bras do not prevent boob sag. It's yeah. fair. I. I I don't know who created the brassiere, but you know what? The, like they, they need to go. I'm pretty sure they're rotting in hell. You <laughs> find hell, sir. I know it was a man. <laughs> well, my problem is mine are like, like disproportionate in size and like very, you can very much so tell. And so like, if I buy one to fit one boob, it doesn't fit the other. If I buy one, you know, so I, it's like, I need, that's what I'm going to do also is can we walk the runway with like mom lingerie and there's like different cup sizes. That's what I need. Yes. Right. Because when I, when I stopped breastfeeding my son, my oldest had a favorite boob. Yeah. So one was bigger than the other. And then, then my daughter was like a bottomless pit. So I was like a very painful G cup oh. by the, I might stop breastfeeding. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Did they go down? Um, which, speaking of boobs, can we just talk for a second about what an asshole the universe and my husband are for just a second? <laughs> okay. So I, um, uh, over the last year, have lost some weight, and I, and of course, because the universe is a jerk, when you start losing weight, you lose it in your boobs first, right? Because that's just the way it goes, and. Uh, so I was, I was wearing a bra one day. Well, I was wearing a bra to tank top. And my husband's like, um, are your boobs smaller? And I was like, um, I'm losing weight everywhere. Thanks. But thanks so much. Thanks so much for only commenting on my boobs. You're the best. <laughs> he would say that. That's hilarious. Yeah. Oh. Huh. oh, my God. So he's now buried in my backyard. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Did, no, what, what you do is you, you bury him seven feet 
cover him with a foot of dirt and then bury like a dead animal there on top go. of him so that if the corpse dogs come they'll find the dead animal and be like oh that's what that was okay right and that's then move good. along it's good i uh saw on facebook today a comedian skit about how you are three times more likely to be killed by your spouse than by a stranger and how we're all concerned about i think this is from a while ago because i feel like it was talking about um you know we're all we're all scared about terrorist groups and you know mass shooters and things like that when really you are three times more likely to be killed by the person you are going to sleep with at the end of the night and i was like well yeah of course you are like i was not even phased by that <laughs> Well, I mean, that makes sense. I, I've been married. Like, yeah, I'm on my second marriage. But my 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 current husband is fantastic. I love him. I'm like, I have no complaints. But we did just get married in November of 2021. <laughs> yeah. uh, apparently, I'm told by older married couples that there will be a time where I look longingly at the poison. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Although I, I mean, I've been married for eleven years, eleven and a half years. Um, I love my husband. He's a really he's he's a good one. He's a good guy. Um, I, but I I think about killing him probably at least once a week. <laughs> <laughs> Many a talks about the life insurance policy. You know, insurance, oh, you got to make sure huh. their life and like their life insurance policy is good first. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, shout shout out to shout out to Rob. I love you, babe. <laughs> totally not planning your murder right now. She is not. She is not. John, different story. Keep it. Keep it. Uh, keep Stay it tight, nervous, man. buddy. Or Stay watch nervous. out. <laughs> yeah. Stay on your toes, bud. Stay yeah. On your toes. At least one eye open. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I mean, if I were you, I would chill on the boob comment. <laughs> yeah. P.S. <laughs> See, Nick knows better. He just says boob, and that's like all. I'm like, oh, how articulate. That's great. Thanks. Very good. Okay. I was like, hey, I'm going to need some context here. Are you hungry? Yeah. You know? <laughs> I want to, like, are you looking to, like, you know, get a little feel in? What's up? It's <laughs> boob. <laughs> like, goes total caveman style. I'm like, okay, I really married someone with a great iq cool yeah oh. so what made you want to start this podcast can i tell um, the story yeah go for it go for it i we so we were marco poloing because we live uh states away now we used to live clo in the same state and uh what we were talking one time and i just went we should start a podcast and she marco pulled me back and goes no but let's really start a podcast and that's how we were born and uh that's really the story i mean is there more to it than yeah. that i feel like that's i mean i just know for me personally i was in a place where i had been a stay at home mom for a long time and that had been kind of my only focus and i was in a point where i was i really wanted to do something where I could share my experience with the world. You know, I, I was oh, um, nice. going through raising some kids with um, ADHD and some, some anxiety and different things. I've experienced some really bad postpartum depression. And whenever I would have an opportunity to talk to a mom one-on-one -on -one with it, it just would feel so good. Like whenever I could help a mom feel validated, it, it felt like that was my purpose. And so I really wanted to find a way that I could get my voice out there. And I'm, I'm not the smartest person in the world. I don't know everything. I'm not the, the best at anything, but I just wanted to be able to share my perspective. And I was trying to figure out a way to do that. And JC said, but we should do a podcast. And it felt like a puzzle piece like clicked for me where I was like, oh my gosh, let's do a podcast. Let's do oh, it. I'm glad you actually did tell the story because I'm just a golden retriever and I just wanted to try <laughs> something new. And that's the personality I have. I mean, but it's not its not just that. I mean, you have a lot of experience as well. You've been through your own trauma and now your experience with raising neurodiverse kids. I mean, you have a lot that you want to share with the world as well. That's true. I just, yeah. I like i like hearing other women. I, I, I did, I think that was a goal for us was like blowing up the unrealistic expectations in motherhood. And, you know, I feel like when I first became a mom and I was trying to make mom friends, I didn't really know how much to divulge about my motherhood journey, like how much I could admit that 
sometimes I really, really hated it because I came from a culture where it was like, you never talk bad about your husband ever. You never keep secrets like in your, like from your husband, which I, I know that's a little bit more nuanced, but like it also had this mentality of like, you are always supposed to enjoy motherhood and it's only always supposed to be like so great and you're supposed to be able to do it all. And so when I was trying to find a community, I I didn't know how much I could actually divulge about how I really was feeling about it, which is so funny because once you get me talking, I can't shut up about it. I'm like way too much of an open book, but I found Mary and she's just as brutally honest about it as I am. And we're like, hey, maybe other people should know that it's okay if you don't always love what you're doing. Yeah. Well, and I, I really wanted women to feel validated. I wanted them to feel validated in their motherhood. That was really important to me. And I had a moment, I was out with another mom um, the other night who I don't know super well. And we were talking about postpartum depression and just mom rage. And let me first of all say, I do not condone abusing kids in any way, shape, or form. But we were talking about how when sometimes you're dealing with postpartum depression and there's that rage. And I remember my oldest being a toddler and just having such rage and having a moment where I'm like, oh, this is why people beat their kids. And that's when I you know, knew to seek help. And she's like, I see, this is why I'm friends with you is because I, I didn't know that anybody else has those thoughts, that anybody else thinks that. You think that you're not allowed to say that. You're not allowed to think that um, because then people are like, well, you're not supposed to beat your kids. And you're like, I know. No, I know. I get that. That's why I, that's why I sought help. Um, but right. that doesn't always stop those those that that rage, you know, that you're like, okay, I needed to do something. You know what? First of all, the people that oh well, you're not supposed to beat your kids yeah. and you're not doing it right. Nine times out of ten, there are people with no kids. Yeah. People who say you're supposed to love every second of motherhood are not moms. They've never experienced the screaming child in the middle of the night, the colic child, the well, in my case, like I had, I have an autistic teen, you know, no one's it. They haven't experienced the picking, the plucking, please stop picking at your face. What are you doing? You know, get, get your stem toys, whatever, you know, whatever the case may be, or in, you know, or just, just a moody teenager that doesn't want to do shit. (laughs) (laughs) Well, for sure. And I think that is what we a unique spin that we do bring to it is when you do add neurodiversity to the mix, it adds a whole other layer of parenting to it that, you know, frankly, other, other parents will try to be like, Oh, I know you just got to be like stern in the discipline and stern in that. And I'm like, quite frankly, sorry, but shut up because you don't like, just realize you don't have experience in that. And that's okay. Just like, you can still support me without having to like, solve my problems just be in the heart with me and be with me in that and so I think that's what we try to offer to moms especially moms raising neurodivergent children yeah like for for all the other moms out there you know if you see moms of neurodivergent children crying or frustrated or what just know I do not need you to give me advice (laughs) I just need you to sit there just breathe, just breathe next to me, just, or, or, or tell me you've had the same thoughts in the middle of the night, you know, in the dark. Yeah. I I don't know if y'all agree with me, but that, that, that's, that's why this show came to be. It started with, it goes down in the PM, but I'm, I am a, you know, I'm a woman of color trying to raise raise my kids through generational trauma through you know trying different ways raise my kids to be emotionally intelligent raising my autistic teen and it's like it's a culturally i was enculturated to believe that we don't talk about any of that yeah, yeah. Which is why you're supposed to be able to do it all. My mom consistently made me feel inadequate every single time she would do, like she would do things 
with like she would ask me questions follow up second guess me ask me if i made sure my kids had clothes my mom oh no i forgot i completely forgot to dress my kids today yeah. you know no i put a, i gathered up all the dirty clothes and put them on them yeah. you know we are like oh yeah that darn thing no just go yeah. naked children it's fine my my toddlers would never have matching socks and my mom was very concerned that they didn't have matching socks i'm like you know what they're alive where do we go? Where who ha, who has time to track down matching socks right, right. for kids? Well, and let me tell you this: is I got sick of the not being able to find matching socks, so I made a decision to get them all just like white ones, which was also a bad decision because now my my boys are only two and a half years apart. I cannot freaking tell what size they are. I have no idea which sock goes to which kid, and it was a stupid decision. I just make Liam like if my oldest, I just make him use like stretch out the. Size. I'm like, I am not finding other socks. I don't care if they're too small. Stretch them out. <laughs> Use the fuck it method, right? <laughs> it looks Wait. about the same. It kind of looks like it might fit on it. Fuck it. Put yeah. it on. No, my I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> my eight-year-old wore fuzzy Christmas socks to school today with shorts. So that's about where we're at. Uh, <laughs> you know what? It's it's a okay. Yeah. But my my sons are outgrowing their clothes faster than I can replace them. Yeah. They're you know they're both going through puberty, so their room is like walking past a garbage dump that smells like clothes <laughs> and ass and corn chips. I secretly <laughs> love that though. I don't like. I had a mom that was very particular about my clothes matching, and she'd be like, "Oh my gosh, your clothes don't match." But I I don't know about you guys. I personally love it when my kids go pick out their own clothes and it's like this mismatching outfit and like rain boots with shorts and their hair is messy. I even took a picture of my four-year-old because I was like, way to go. I don't know. I think it's so cute. I mean, I'm an asshole. I'll be like, you know what matches this? Matches this? Hey. (laughs) <laughs> I'll be honest. I hate it. I hate the mismatched clothes. I just don't hate it enough to fight it. Like, and I, and not on anybody else's kids. Like, I'm never like looking at somebody else's kids and being like, that doesn't match. But just on my own kids, I'm like, that's not what I'd prefer you wear to school. But you know what? You're dressed and the bus is going to be here in 10 seconds. So, well, go. I will say this I actually did get mad at my husband today for picking out mismatching clothes. And part of me is like, you're an adult, do better. <laughs> like, it's cute when my four year old does it. But like, when my husband does it, it drives me crazy. I'm like, do better. As far as mitch mismatched clothes for me, it's like, okay, it's different. Like you're hanging out in the house, okay, wear whatever you want. If you think I'm taking you anywhere outside of the house, that's a different story. And again, like I have, you know, I'm a woman of color. I have, you know, my children are, you know. They're, they're children of color, children of color, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. They're mine, so they're part me, I'm woman of color, do the math. <laughs> you know, there's different, there's different things as far as grooming that they have to do too. Like, my daughter has to wear a bonnet, otherwise the cotton will break her hair. You know, she has to comb it before she leaves out. And it's like, bonnet in the house bonnet off when you're out the house yeah she's seven so we fight about Mm -hmm. that That, i mean yeah that adds a whole other layer which i mean admittedly (laughs) mary and i wouldn't have experience in yeah you know so well Well, and so many people don't know about too i think that that's when people get judgy about oh your kid's wearing this or that it's like you you don't know what that person has to to deal with at home right yeah i mean yeah whether it's i mean hair texture and those needs or you know even neurodivergent and the the sensory needs you know sometimes like some things my kid wears like he can't wear specific items of clothing because they drive him crazy and he's always trying to rip off his clothes if they're uncomfortable yes um john went through a whole thing where he just he loved one shirt hated the other said it felt different i'm like it's made of the same stuff. I don't understand. Yeah. And then, you know, I, I went through having to wash this shirt 
And then he gets attached to like shoes yeah. for the longest time. I had to just buy the same shoe one size up and then hide the old ones from him. But he always knew. He yeah. always knew. <laughs> Well, and it's funny, I like for a while would buy my kids several pairs of shoes in the same size, but then they would get attached to one pair and they would just wear that pair. And then there'd be like holes and their toes are poking out. And I'm like, they have other shoes at home. They just won't wear them. So I've given up. And I'm like, everybody gets a pair of shoes and you wear it out and then we go find another one. Yeah. And uh, again, like uh, on the flip side, people will, you know, look at my daughter or whatever. And then the judgment is ridiculous. Oh, do you use this type of oil, these hair products? How are you caring for her hair? Because even though my people descend from a black indigenous tribe, they just don't feel like I am, uh, I am, uh, competent enough to care for my daughter's hair. Because apparently my, my hair does not have enough, texture to make me competent and the one episode of conversations last season i talked about cutting off one of her relatives because she was just so toxic mm. when it came to the mom judgment but we came here because i i said i want to dispel the myth of the super mom yeah. I, I briefly spoke about how my mom makes me feel inadequate sometimes she's the mom she's like a virgo through and through like she she's in charge of everything she knows where every single solitary thing is what's going on my my mom is has everything on the calendar i however will make lunch and forget them and then hand them money yeah (laughs) (laughs) Well, and I think, um, you know, it's such an interesting topic. I, for most of my life, like what I, if you'd asked me what I would want, I I wanted to be super mom. I wanted to, so many times throughout my life, I've said, I just want to look like I have it all together. Like that was just something that's so important to me and it's toxic and I'm, and it brings unhappiness and it's something like I'm working my way out of because it's not helpful to anybody. Yeah. What about you, JC? How how do you how do you feel about the super mom myth? How has that affected your parenting style? Um, I feel like it is a big reason I went into postpartum depression, especially after my first. Uh, I I think all I've ever wanted to be like all I wanted people to see me as is competent. I don't know if I necessarily felt like I needed to wear the super mom badge, but I do feel like I need to be, I need to always feel secure in how I am parenting. If that makes, if that makes sense. Um, cause, cause like, so. I'm like a Virgo, but I'm a Virgo with ADHD. So one minute I'm like really put together and people are like, Oh my gosh, you are so organized. You're the best mom. You do every, like when the COVID hit, I made a whole preschool in my living room and then I burnt out. And like when it came time to teaching my kids preschool, all hell broke loose. It all bur- like blew up into flames. And so I can like put on a really good show But behind the scenes, I am a total mess. And when mental health hits me and mental illness hits me, I become even more of a mess. And so I worry that I don't look like I'm competent enough to raise my children. Um, So I feel like I always kind of need to put on that show on the outside. And so and I think that really led to, you know, a lot of the depression was like not feeling good enough or sometimes it still does lead to the the depression of not feeling good enough. I feel like a lot of moms go through not feeling good enough. Mm -hmm. And where does that come from? It's such a ubiquitous image, but where do we get it from our, do our parents make us feel like we need to have it all together? Is it media? What, what is it? I think it's everything. I think there's literally not a thing that, that doesn't, that it's not in. I think that it's, our parents. I think it's um, our our media. I think it's social media. I think it's movies and TV. I think it's um, society. 
Um, I think even in our friendships, because it's so deeply ingrained in us, I think maybe that we're not always the best at um, showing others that they don't have to do everything. You know, we're hesitant to to tell people that we're struggling. And so we don't want to show people the, the hard parts, that the parts that we're losing it. We just want to say, I'm fine. And so somebody else looks at us and goes, oh my gosh, that person's working and raising kids and cleaning their house and doing this and doing this. And and they say they're fine and I'm not doing that much and I'm not fine. So I'm, I'm doing it wrong and we feel like we're not enough. Um, something I've had to really come to terms with and, and my analogy for it is that we're all juggling balls and everybody is dropping some balls. It just depends what balls you're dropping. <laughs> okay, now I need a new analogy. I, I, I just laugh every time you say it. <laughs> Patons? I worked for juggling patons. I was trying really hard. I was trying really hard, but the twelve-year-old in me was like, "She said balls." <laughs> or dropping balls, the emotional guys. Emotional maturity or balls. <laughs> for us. Oh, I don't. Okay, we're we're all juggling tasks. That's why men do when weaponizing competence is because they can only manage two barely. So. Yeah. yeah. Um. Two so balls. I mean, I two balls. I can't. <laughs> You're like, oh, I think um, like, so for me, I'm a PTO mom and I, I almost feel like I have to like justify that to people because I'm like, hang on. Like, I'm not, I'm not that kind of PTO mom. Like I'm not, I'm not, you know, it's not like um, bad moms, right. Where it's like a cult and you know, it's, it's, okay, it's yeah. like, you know, where everything has to be homemade and it, no, no, no. We're all hot messes rolling in there and whatever leggings and with store-bought goods because you can't bring anything homemade into school anyways. And I mean, it's not, but it, it's kind of funny. I do. I feel like I have to justify it when I, cause, but I, I personally love being at the school. I love getting to volunteer um, with my kids and being involved with their teachers, but that means that there are a lot of other things that don't get done. You know, like I'm not always on top of my house. There are a lot there, you know, I'm not always spending time with my kids outside of school. There's a lot of things that aren't getting done that other people are doing because I'm volunteering at the school. Um, And so I never want anybody to look at me and think, oh my gosh, how can she be on PTO? Because they're doing something I'm not. Show of hands. And I, I need an honest answer right now. Because I'm looking at your houses right now, and your houses look pretty clean. <laughs> at least the room you're podcasting in. Show of hands, how many of you will step out of that room and house will be a like a disaster? Like, a, whose house is a three kid messy right now? I mean, mostly. I will say it's a it's a little bit cleaner than it was this morning, only because I'm working on cleaning up before Mother's Day weekend. And my house cleaner, I have a house cleaner that comes and like does floors and bathrooms and stuff is coming on Monday. And I don't want to have to like do the pre pickup before she comes on Sunday. And so my house is like a little bit cleaner than it was this morning. This morning, it was like three kid disaster in every single room. Now it's only in like 50% of the rooms. Okay. <laughs> but most of the time, it's a disaster. So, so it's like two and a half kid messy right yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, but like if, if it helps, I pulled, and if my mom would die if she ever heard this. But I mean, I pulled bowls of cereal off of the coffee table today that were like old cereal and milk where it had like solidified. I mean, I was I was washing dishes that had sat there for a while this morning. Oh, see, I would cry. I would I would get my teens teen boys up and be like, look, y'all listen, y'all some nasty motherfuckers. Y'all gotta get up and clean this. I don't know who you think is I'm trying to figure out who the fuck you think is cleaning this shit. It's definitely not gonna be me. Well, well that's oh. the hard thing is like I don't know if we've even talked about that on the podcast, but sometimes when you do have like super like neurodivergent kids, like my autistic kid, I, the problem is like when it comes to cleaning my house and if I want to get the kids involved, I have to like heavenly, like heavily monitor the cleaning, especially, especially for my six-year-old because the way the development age that he's at right now, it's like, okay, pick that up. Okay, put that in the trash. Okay, now do that. I have to constantly hover over him that sometimes it just feels like a lot more work than it's worth. And then I get burnout and then it all, you know, all goes to shit. Yeah. But yeah. I was going to say, I think a, another thing is 
one, people that are showing their homes in, on social media oftentimes have a set, a quote unquote set. So they have an area of their house that looks really nicely p- put together. And then there's a lot of, I think people are getting better at it now, but there's a lot of these Insta moms, influencer moms that have a lot of help and they don't like to divulge that information that they have a whole lot of help. And that's a privilege. Yeah. Listen, I, t- I, well, I like to do a disclaimer. I said, listen, my house is three kid messy, 24 hours a day. And I am a, I, I'm a business owner at home. I work from home. My business is at home. And you know what? I was stay at home mom, you know, from the time I met my husband to, to, well, to the time my husband moved in with me till, till like recently and I got a job for my mental health yeah. because I started to feel like I was waiting for people to come home. Yeah. Yeah. And I like, I don't know if you, other moms feel that way. Oh, and to your point about the PTO mom, <laughs> I, I have like a semi-famous bit about the PTO moms at my kid's school. <laughs> <laughs> and no, it's no judgment on you. It, like yeah. there are some great PTO moms, but so some of them, I I remember I was rocking out to some like DMX. Oh I was yeah, like, some real gangster. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was what, blasting, and then I get the <laughs> hi, Julene. So you were noticeably absent from the PTO meeting. Did you oh really? gosh, attending this week? Nope. Have a nice day. <laughs> we need some volunteers for. Nope. Goodbye. Because, not because I'm a dick. I'm built that way, right? Yeah. But because when I first, this was when my oldest was still at that school. When I first got there, like they, what they like treated me pretty bad. Like they were all clicked up because they they knew each other since their kids were in kindergarten. Yeah. My kids got there when my oldest was in the sixth grade. And then they started talking trash about me in a different language. And then I was like, then I told them in Spanish that I knew Spanish. Oh, and gosh. then they were offended that I knew Spanish and didn't tell them. <laughs> oh, I was like, gosh. So, you know. How dare you tell us that we can't talk about you in a different language or you not tell us that? How dare you? I know. But then, you know what? Then she started asking me to do stuff. I was like, how about you not talk shit about someone that you might need to ask to volunteer? Yeah. Uh, I'll be like, she'll be like, can you volunteer for the Halloween parade? Nope. Yeah. Can't. Sorry. I'm already volunteering for my daughter's class. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel pretty lucky that the PTO, that, uh, my kids have only ever been at one school so far. Um, and we just kind of got lucky. It's an area that a lot of people move to. And, um, it's always been a really open, like really welcome, welcoming and open. Um, there's, you know, a combination of moms who work and stay at home moms, you know, most people have several kids. So it's like, nobody expects the pristine it's not PTO meetings are not with everybody's makeup on and everybody all put together with homemade goods. No, we are all drive through moms with our hair in a messy bun and just like (laughs) trying to survive. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's definitely, there's definitely some crazies out there, but I feel, (laughs) yeah, but I also feel like, you know, I, when my oldest was in kindergarten, I started volunteering a lot at the school and I got to know a lot of like the specials teachers and the other teachers, which ended up working out really well when my middle one went into school because he struggles a lot more with school than my oldest did and him already knowing some of the teachers, I don't think I would have been able to get him to go otherwise. I mean, it just would not have been, it would not have been possible. That is fantastic. I truly and honestly believe that every teacher should have some sort of special needs training. Yeah. Special ed training. Um, the My son's current teacher is great with him. But when she first met him, she wrote me the nastiest email telling me that I need to hold my son accountable more often. Uh. 
I was like, are you suggesting that I discipline my autistic child more often? Is that it? Here's some links so you can educate yourself on what is going on with it. Right. It comes wow. down to education. And sometimes it's frustrating because I don't know, the the lack of education only goes so far with me because I'm like, they're there are articles like I'm sharing it. I'm sharing it on my page, like people close to me. I'm like, I don't think you have too many excuses anymore, especially like friends and family that are close to me. Cause I'm like, I share it. I put it out there or you're, you know, you're a grown adult. You have, you have fingers, go type in a keyboard and and, see yeah. what it is. and now nobody has an excuse because we just did an episode on what is autism. And so I'm like, yeah. you don't have an excuse now. You got to listen to my podcast. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Tune in to Mother Chuck and Truth so you you get an idea of what, you know, what neurodiversity is, what autism is, what ADHD is. But can I can well, I say we, something about the PTO mom real quick though? Like I think I that was such a big thing when I first had kids. It's like, are you the hot mess mom? Are you the sporty mom, the PTO mom and this? And I think all of us at the end of the day just kind of feel this outside pressure from society to be something more, right? Like be a super mom. And we're all trying to embrace that in our own way. Like, I don't think people have an excuse to be a bitch about it. I'm just saying, I think, I think at the end of the day, like, I don't know, bring down the patriarchy. Cause I think we're all just trying to live up to an ex an expectation in our heads that is just wildly unattainable. Yeah. I mean, everybody who's ever said to me like, oh, I can't believe you do PTO. I could never do that. They have something in their life that they're doing that I envy, that I wish I could be that. They're either, um, you know, a super successful like business person. And I, you know, I'm like, I'm, I think that's amazing. I'm in awe of that. Or they're this incredible homemaker and, you know, home decorator. And it's like, I'm, I'm inspired by that. Like they're, it's never the same thing. Never. It's nobody's strengths are the same, but everybody who says, something like, I mean, it's awesome you volunteer PTO. That's just not my thing. They have something that I'm like, I don't do that. And I wish I did. I mean, that's awesome. It's just that is that is something I enjoy. That's something where I have some strengths, but I have plenty of weaknesses, plenty of other areas. <laughs> I, I admire the level of organization and patience that that job requires. Because, I mean, you see, I don't even have patience for online trolls. <laughs> I'm like, no. See, but you're because I have. You're an amazing businesswoman with two podcasts. I we have more than you that. have more than that. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. No, it's okay. You tell me about the no. two. What other ones do you have? Okay, so Mom is always right. Media Network. We we have the A Show, and that's it. Goes down in the PM. Yeah. Then we had Coffee After Dark, a very Walker vlog. We've got Bite Sexual, Two Dope Girls, and. And we got mom versus. Oh, I didn't see the other ones on your website when I was checking it out. But wow, I'm gonna. That's awesome. You have it. See, so like you're rocking it in that in the podcast world. And the and the blogs. Um, cool. Fun fact: It goes down in the PM once once we get funded, we'll be hiring an entertainment lawyer and a distributor to get our content on Hulu and Netflix. Oh, how fun! Awesome. That's crazy. You'd be surprised though. It's like five bands to get a distributor. Wow. <laughs> That's insane. That's crazy. Thank, thank you. But I do have a part time job that involves burgers and fries, though. Not going to lie. Hey, you know what? Sometimes you need something that gets you out of the house. I totally understand that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you just need to, you know, talk to people face to face that are not your own children. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. And I find myself talking to customers like, I understand you're really, I understand you're disappointed and I totally get that. <laughs> so what I can do. Is... Yeah. I love that. Do you still feel like you are mothering people? Sometimes. 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 Yeah. You have to practice your gentle parenting somewhere else. Yes, exactly. Okay, so um, we have cups on the counter. Well, uh, I do recall the manager saying that we are not supposed to have cups on the counter. So would you like me to move your cup or would you like to move the cup? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I love it. Great, great choice giving. 
<laughs> right? Like, yeah. that's how it goes. Yeah. I know that. But, yeah, like, I saw you guys on Instagram, and I'm thoroughly enjoying your content, and I love it. I was like, this is so on brand. I got to get these ladies on the show. You know, sh- like we could, we got to collaborate, do something. So yeah. I'm so excited that we finally made it. Happen. Yes. Yes. Us too. Yeah. It's been, JC and I have uh, hit some roadblocks while trying to figure out how to run a business. You know, this is not really something we've done before. And, uh, you know, there've been some, some stumbling moments while we try to figure out how to handle it. But um, I'm super excited we got to collab. Yeah, that's honestly why I'm in awe that like how much you do and still have a part-time job because I that was like my biggest thing when Mary and I started the podcast. I was like, oh my gosh, this is like a full-time job. And then I got to go to my other job, my other part-time job that I do. And then I got to raise these kids. And then I actually like have to pay attention to my marriage. Like that's all, it's so <laughs> yeah. much. But then it's- you're told to like take things off your plate. And I'm like, but I don't want to, I like it all. Exactly. I'll take all of that and come back for seconds. Yeah. Yeah. And See, there's Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, like I just keep thinking about the, the TikTok that it's like, stop trying to do it all. And then the person comes in and is like, then who the fuck is gonna do it? And I'm like, I mean, that's real. That's real. Facts. Facts. Cause and it does like I do I do have this business that I'm running. You know, with, uh, you know, I sell, sell ad space. I manage other people's social medias and create content for that. Mm-hmm. And it does take up a lot of time. I think one of my fatal flaws is remembering to end my workday. Mm. Yeah. That is so hard. Like, I'll go, I'll keep going. Like, I'll put the kids down for a nap. I get home from the part time, put the kids down create content 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 cut video manage other people's social media client social media you know all the, and you know it's to a point where i'm i'm pooping and working peeing yeah. working cooking working because and if you look on social media you will not find me active on any personal social media yeah. because it's like i'm over it <laughs> by the time I'm, I'm over it yeah. So, but I really do fall short in ending my work day. Yeah. Well, but I feel like um all of the all of the things that you do, all the work that you do, you know, you you take your kids to the park and then come home and do work. Do you feel like that falls into the super mom category or do you feel like that keeps you out of it? Cuz I feel like a lot of people would look at that and say, "Oh my gosh, you worked and took your kids to the park, you're super mom." Yeah, but Thing is, I I fall short in other things. Like my yeah. house is a mess, and I I put the disclaimer so nobody expects me to actually do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like um, JC and I were Marco polling earlier this morning, and we were she was saying, you know, we're talking about um, the the myth of the super mom. And JC, I want you to share what Nick said and then what you said to him. Do you remember? No. Sorry. He said something about, you know, yes, there is super mom. Oh, and he's you like, said, yes, there is a super mom. You, know, you. And I, what did I say? Yeah. Oh. You said, do you know why people call, say that they're super moms? Oh. And I said, because they don't have to help them then. Yeah. If you tell somebody, oh, you're a super mom, then you don't have to help them. Oh, that was, no. that was a fair point. Um, that people will call you a super mom to get out of helping you. Yeah. Yeah. But- I think it's really easy to look at people and think, oh, they're doing it all. Like, oh, they don't need help. Like, and then it kind of turns into the sick mind game of like, oh, I don't know. The messaging comes over and over and over again. Then you think that you shouldn't even ask for help. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, I can't accept mom. I, I, or sorry, I can't accept help. I got to be super mom. I got to be able to do it all. And uh, my therapist actually suggested, yeah, I, I do go to therapy. I'm a veteran yeah. with TSD and I'm um I'm raising an autistic child. I go to therapy. Yes. Um, but uh my therapist actually was like, So why do you feel like you can't ask them for help? And I didn't realize it, but I felt guilty for taking on a part time job. Like my daughter 
was like, why do you have to go to work? Why can't you just stay here? And then everybody will be like, oh, why are there dishes in the sink? The house is a mess. Can you do something about this? And, uh, and you know, they, and like, you know, it's not just, it, my husband will never say that to me, but my mom and dad will be like, it's a mess in here. Cause you know, they live with me and the kids live with me and they're like, it's a mess in here. Oh my gosh. Have you seen the kitchen? And I'm just like, why do I have to do something about it? Yeah. Why does it all fall on me? That so, was the thing when we were going, when I was going back into work, I told Nick, I said, I have to hire someone to at least come for a few hours a week. I have to. I don't care how much it costs. If I'm going to go back to work, I have to hire someone to help me. And I know that not everybody is able to do that. Um, but I don't know. And it took a long time to vet the process. But, and sometimes it's, I don't know if it's worth it because I, I, I told my husband, I was like, even her like coming to help me, like she's doing all the stuff that I was never even getting to anyway because I didn't have the time to get to it. And so, I mean, she's helpful, but at the same time, it's not like taking a load off. Yeah. After we did um, an episode early in the season about weaponized incompetence and kind of talked about sharing that that mental load and sharing the load of, of household work. And um, after that, I had a conversation with my husband and he took over doing laundry. He is now in charge of all the laundry. And it's crazy what a different standard it is for moms and for dads. You know, he works a full-time job and he helps out with the kids in the evening and he is in charge of laundry and and a few other things. I mean, I don't want to, but like, I'm not going to sit here and list everything he does. You know, I... I am a mom. I work part-time. And then I also have, you know, our podcast business um, that is is time-consuming um, as well as, you know, just everything else that comes with being a mom. I'm in charge of, you know, meal planning and grocery shopping and um, many, many other things. And I, like, but when I tell my mom that like, oh, well, John's in charge of laundry now. It's like, oh, people are like, oh my gosh, he does the laundry? Like, wow, that's you're so lucky. Like, that's amazing that he does it. And it's like, it wasn't amazing when I was doing it. And I'm working the equivalent of a full-time job now. But when I was doing it, it was just expected. But with him, it's like, oh, look at him going above and beyond. Oh, wow. Great husband. Yay. Oh, God. Meal planning. Don't even get me started. Like, you, when my husband gets up and cooks something... I get, I get asked, oh my God, Julian, he's worked all day. You're really going to make him sit there and cook his cook? (laughs) How dare you? I think, I think it's, it's a culture thing too. Yeah. Well, and this is something I've never talked about before is that I deal with a lot of guilt because when we're in like a group setting um, and it's evening, like a lot of times my husband will take over keeping an eye on the toddler. You know, if the toddler is kind of going off somewhere, a lot of times he'll take over that. Or if we're hanging out with friends and he has to leave to go put the baby to sleep, a lot of times he'll go put the baby to sleep and, you know, and I will stay. And I, I feel I'm, I haven't had anybody, well, my, other than my mom, mm-hmm. I haven't had anybody say anything to me, but I feel very judged. I feel very like, people think that I'm a bad mom because I'm not going to do it. That is so funny because I've seen your husband do that more most of the time. And what I actually feel is like resentful that my husband doesn't do that when we're in in get togethers. So isn't that like, I just think that's interesting. And it's kind of funny. It's like, I feel like the responsibility falls on me and I jump to do it. And I get like resentful of my husband because your husband is the one taking it over. And then you're over here feeling guilty about it. I think oh, it's some of it is outside people saying things, but then how much of that is really our own self talk? Well, oh, I think yeah. it's our own self talk. Talk. I think it's a lot internal, but I always hesitate on that because I feel like it's internal because of all the external pressure we were raised with. Yeah. So yeah, we have to like talk self talk our way out of it, but it's not really our fault. I feel like that we're in it to begin with. Well, and we weren't really told we weren't really taught how to manage our emotions. Like when an emotion comes up, we weren't taught how to process emotions. We were kind of taught to shut up and shove them down, I feel like. And so in my my therapist, because hell yeah, I go to therapy, I deserve it. Um <laughs> Oh, 
Thank you. Thank you. Um, but you know, my therapist really right now is like, anytime I feel any feeling, she's like, okay, feel it. Let it sit there. Let the energy like move through you, let it process. And a lot of the time, like that basic emotion I'm feeling kind of will make its way down into a, a, a different emotion. So like she, she explains like anxiety as an umbrella. A lot of the times, like when we get anxious, it's this umbrella emotion. We're taught that anger is a secondary emotion. Her theory is that anxiety is kind of like that also. It's this umbrella that we feel anxiety because we're trying to protect ourselves from feeling the actual emotions that are happening within us. And, you know, we weren't taught how to do that. Yeah. That's very interesting because I think a lot of times my anxiety is triggered by feeling incompetent or feeling judged. So I like that, that would be the the first emotion. That is typically what triggers my anxiety most times. Yeah, that and yeah, yeah, I agree. When when I when I feel anxious, it's usually because I feel like I'm going to say or do the wrong thing. And it's and I I feel that way because because of the judgment, because I'm silently judging myself, I'm silently feeling in inadequate i'm feeling all these things quietly because we're told okay i was told if i show these things then i'm going to scare my children yeah i have to look put together 100 percent of the time or my children are going to be scared and fall apart yeah <laughs> we are adamant believers that we are going to screw up our children somehow right like it's going to it's going to happen. Some oh, yeah. somewhere. They'll be in therapy yeah. for something. It's just a matter of trying to teach them coping skills that however we screw them up, they'll be able to come out of it on the other side. Yeah. 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 What did some I actually saw on TikTok, someone was talking about like the generations and like boomers and like I don't know, like Gen X and millennials. This was their words were like the the neglected generation, like we're kind of dealing with like our parents doing other things. Again, this is their words, like the neglected generation, which I personally resonate with. And then someone was like, what are, what are the next, the other generations going to, you know, what, what are they going to have to deal with that we, we were dealing with? And someone said anxiety. And I'm like, yeah, that's fair. I think a lot of millennials feel anxiety. Yeah. And our parent and our kids are probably gonna have to go to therapy to be like, my mom was such a mess all the time. She was so anxious, and, and I'll be like, fair, it's fair. I feel like because I'm I'm Gen X, Gen Y. I'm 1982. I was the latchkey kid. I watched the internet get born. I drank out of the hose and did not care about germs. Yeah. Um, You're I like the very end, yeah. Yeah, the very end. I feel like I overcompensate for how much I was always left to my own devices. Yeah. So I'm always in my children's business. I'm always around. I'm like, what's going on? And, you know, I, I try and talk about emotions. I tell my son, son, you know, how are you doing? What's going on with school? Is everything all right? Are you being bullied? What's going on? Let me know. Tell me something. I want to know. Yeah. And you know what? Kids are like, oh my God, mom, go away. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, leave me alone. Yeah, it yeah. is. We're, we're trying to correct some of the ways that we were misparented. And I'm sure yeah. are making our own whole new set of mistakes. Yeah. yeah. But like, you know. My oh sorry, go ahead. No, well, I was just gonna say we had uh, somebody on in season one who said everybody everything that my parents did on purpose was pretty good. It was the stuff they didn't realize that they were doing that screwed me up. And I was like, that's pretty valid. Like, and probably everything that we're trying to do with our kids is probably working okay. It's probably the stuff of like freaking out and having anxiety about it or whatever, or second guessing ourselves or changing our parenting strategy every two seconds or whatever. That's gonna be yeah. something like that, that screws them up. Yeah. It I, I yeah, that's fair. That is one hundred percent fair. <laughs> Sometimes I wish I could get hop in a time machine and, you know, go forward to like sit in my kids' therapy sessions and look at like, what is it? What what is it that we're right? Doing? Right. And you know, I think because I stayed at home, 
I became a stay at home mom and, you know, I ran my business from home. Um, when my, when my son was like 12, I believe from 12 to now, like he's a little bit, he has an unrealistic expectation of what women do in the home. Oh, and yeah. because, you know, I did everything. And I remember a young girl told him something about tacos, like wanting to get him some tacos or something. And he's like, oh no, I, my mom hand presses my tortillas so they're <laughs> fluffier can i come move in with you <laughs> i mean while he may be speaking the truth because i have had head pressed tortillas and they are a thousand percent better um yeah <laughs> that might be an unrealistic <laughs> expectation i was like yeah i if i was that girl i would never feed you ever again <laughs> <laughs> no i don't know that's all she needs is someone is a man comparing her to like his mom. That's all. She needs. <laughs> I I think like the way we overcorrect is going to be a problem later on. Oh that's, yeah, that's just my opinion. Oh for sure. I mean, we've talked about that about like what a pendulum life is. That it's like you know our parents were doing things wrong this way, so we're swinging too far the other direction where we need to be kind of somewhere in the middle. Yeah, I maybe think our that's, kids will get there. I think that's been like a huge part of the, like the mental health journey for me. Is so like for context, I don't have a relationship with my biological mother. Like I cut her off a couple of years ago. So, um, just childhood trauma, all that stuff. Um, but through like. When I became a mom, I was like dead set on not being anything like her. Like I didn't want to be anything like her. And when things I did started to kind of creep up that I saw were kind of like her, it sent me into this whole crisis mode. And so I hope my kids like wouldn't mind being a little bit like like me. You know yeah. what I mean? That's a good point. Um, But – I don't know. Yeah, it's like it's it's scary to think that my kids are going to want to over like overcorrect the things I did because part of me is like, oh, I don't even know if that's an attainable goal. I think that's I think that's an unrealistic expectation to correct all of your parents. Mis mis uh, sorry, all of your parents mistakes through your parenting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. So what has been the best part of this podcasting journey? I think the, the I mean, undoubtedly the women we've connected with, the people that we've gotten to interview and talk to and get perspectives from. And literally every time we get a DM about like, oh my gosh, I resonate so much with this. I totally feel this. Every time we get a comment like that, every time we get, every time a mom feels seen or heard because of us, it like, I feel like my heart lights up. <laughs> like for real. Yeah, I'll ditto that. That's exactly how I feel. I love, I I think I've grown to just like, you know, over, okay, context. I was thinking about this the other day because when I was in my early 20s, I was one of those women that was like, I don't need feminism. I don't need that. <laughs> and now I'm very much like, I love women. I would die for women. I want to be there for women. Um, and there's an episode coming up in a couple of weeks that afterwards, I just sobbed afterwards because I just want women to feel seen in their hardships. And I, I love talking to, I don't know, I like listening to other people talk about it also more than just hearing my thoughts about it. I like talking to the experts. Yeah. That's, that's wonderful. So we're going to wrap a little, we're going to wrap this up a little bit. What's some, what's some things we can expect to see from mother Chuck in truth? Uh, like JC talked about earlier, we're going to get a little bit lighter. Um, April, we really focused on kind of autism acceptance and, and just some neurodiverse things. Um, and <laughs> we need, it's, we I need think that. that it's things, you know, we, we, we talk about autism, but we, we really talked about things that are beneficial for every single human to know. It is not just if you have an autistic child that these things are helpful. These are things that are helpful for every single human to know as they interact with other humans throughout their life. Like it really is um, knowing about masking and stimming and sensory needs and so many more things that we went through. Um, 
are a really important thing. So I hope that people will listen to that, even if they do not, part- you know, even if they don't have a neurodiverse kid. I I really hope that they will hear it. Um, but from here, we're we're gonna move on to some lighter topics. For the most part, we are gonna be talking um, about divorce, which is not a lighter topic. But um, then we're gonna be talking a little bit more about um, some some personality things and um healthy relationships with food and exercise and um women's health hopefully and then we're gonna get planning to season four which will be in the fall well and right now we are doing um a giveaway we um accepted some submissions for moms who are going through kind of a, a difficult time who could need a little bit of help and um have selected a mom who uh lost her sister to suicide this past year and um has when she was pregnant with her third baby was in labor for a really long time and her uh, placenta ruptured and she had to have an emergency C-section. They had to start performing the C-section before she was even numb. And oh, so, oh, um, you know, she's, she's had, and this is third baby. So she's had a hard time recovering from that. That was just a couple months ago. So we're currently um, accepting some funds through our Venmo and JC and I are donating in order to get her um, some, some house cleaning help and some meals delivered to her. Um, just to help her out through this time. And that's because that's what we want to do. We want to help women. We want to help moms. And that's how we're doing it right now. That's that's wonderful. So tell people where they can find you, uh, how they can donate to you. Also, can you DM me all that info yeah. so I can put it in the, put it in the info, put, yeah. put in the description. Yeah, so we you can find us um, on Instagram at the Mother Trucking Truth. Um, we're also on TikTok, and um, in our Instagram, we have our link with it has links to pretty much everywhere you can find us. Um, you can find our podcast on Apple, Google, Amazon, Spotify, Stitcher, everywhere. pretty much anywhere you listen to podcasts. Yeah, and then there's also a link to our Venmo on there as well, right, JC? Yeah. And um, I feel like I'm talking a lot, but also if you want to join our Patreon, we do have extra bonus episodes and some fun extras on that as well. That is so, thank you so much for taking the time to collaborate with me. Hopefully it's the first of many or yes. at least not the last one. <laughs> yes, no, thank for you sure. so much. We really thank appreciate you, you having Listen. us on. If you guys are a hot mess mom, look, I am your peoples, okay? Yes. I'm just saying, I, I'm a, I am a foul mouth hot mess mom that, that ha- and you know, I'm about the age of 40. Come July, I'll be 40 years old. And you know, I, I, I no longer give a fuck and I'm tired of your shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's what. 40 has brought me. <laughs> I saw a TikTok the other day that said the exact same thing. It was like, why does she not care what anybody thinks? Why doesn't she care about people's emotions? And she's like, maybe I'm fucking 40. <laughs> like, yeah. there you go. Yep. Yep. It's the energy we all need in our lives. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I feel like you you would be like my, my mom group. If you guys were on the PTO, I would hang out with you. <laughs> yes. Happy to hear it. I promise that we would not make fun of you in Spanish. I I don't speak enough of it too, but I won't make fun of you in English either. Oh, uh, okay. You know, <laughs> just, just to clarify. <laughs> oh, no, we appreciate but, it. But see, if we do decide to make fun of people, it will be in a language you understand because yeah. I would like to see the look on your face. Yeah. When I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if we do, we're going to do it to your face. I mean, we're not monsters. Yeah, the exactly. only time I can come up with a comeback is hours later in the shower. So I'm not really that witty. I just have to <laughs> – in the shower, I'm like, oh, I should have said that. So no worries about me. <laughs> it, it's uh, it's okay. Me and Mary will we'll hook you up. <laughs> <laughs> but tune in. Tune in to Momversations. Um, tune in daily to my daily Momversation. And while I uh, guide you through the baddest hood in the world, Motherhood. Ooh.